Hey everyone! Today I'm going to analyze the entire Season 11 of Skibidi Toilets. In this episode, the first Skibidi mutant appeared, and G-Man destroyed the YouTube. Why do you think the infected Titan wasn't cured with the anti-parasite cannon? Who this cameraman scientist really is and how it relates to the TV men? Watch till the end and you'll find out all the secrets and hidden details. Get your tea and snacks ready, it's going to be interesting, let's go! Episode 33 begins with a scene where Titan Speakerman destroys two speaker helicopters. As you remember, last episode the scientist infected Titan, and now he's fighting on the Skibidi toilet side. The agents are hiding on the roof and it's really goofy. G-Man and Titan are very tall and they can spot them easily. In doing so, if they were hiding downstairs in the basements of houses or something, then they would be much safer. Notice the song, Everybody Wants to Rule the World plays at the beginning. But the song goes silent when Titan destroys the helicopter speakers. By the way, when he destroyed this helicopter, all that was left of it was the rotor. I have no idea where the speaker disappeared to. Maybe it split into atoms. G-Man Toilet feels like he's invincible. The Alliance's ultimate weapon, I mean Titan Speakerman, is now in his hands. This guy even destroys a building with the YouTube logo on top. I think it's a reference from Dafouk that his show has become very popular and has been gaining crazy amounts of views. Our favorite Andrew Tate helicopters are flying around G-Man. And actually, I think these guys obviously knew something about TV Man. That's why they wore glasses. Notice that G-Man shows up from his toilet at the beginning, so Skibidi could hide his head in the toilet somehow and then pull it out again. Also, G-Man is probably riding on some kind of bridge or the house roof. But most likely he's flying. We've seen his ability to fly in past episodes. I didn't understand why they made him a jetpack if he can already fly. You wrote me in the comments that he needs the jetpack for flight speed and better maneuvering. Without it, he can only hover smoothly in the air. And the most important thing in this episode is the appearance of the first Skibidi mutant. This is a very strange creature, but also very dangerous, I'll tell you why. Skibidi toilets have one major flaw. They just consist of a head and a toilet. I mean, they have no arms and legs. It's hard for them to do anything, and especially to fight. Skibidi Mutant has arms and legs. They are connected to the toilet and Skibidi can control them. I think that a parasite was used to create this version. Remember how infected agents have elongated fingers? This mutant has the exact same thing. Also in episode 37, this creature was neutralized with a knife. Speakerman damaged some kind of device in the back of the toilet, and the mutant was disabled. I think the Skibidi toilet that is connected to this body is alive. After the robotic body was damaged, the mutant fell down, but he was even able to turn his head towards the Speakerman. It turns out that this is just a regular Skibidi toilet that was connected to the infected agent's body. Notice that when he ran, there was silence all around. There was G-Man, Titan, other characters, but when the mutant appeared, they all became silent. It's also just an early version of such an invention. In episode 62, we're shown two new mutants that move more fluidly and consciously. They're also stronger. This guy even seems to have the regenerative ability. Notice that his head and toilet are exactly the same as the Skibidi spiders. However, the spiders always have scary smiles and guns in suspicious places. But that's another story. Okay. And we move on to the next episode, and here the POV cameraman runs into some agent's hangar or something. He lures the infected big cameraman in to cure him of the parasite. The hangar looks empty at first, but then we see all these agents standing there. Either they were hiding or someone moved them here quickly. What about this TV man right here? Did you notice him when you were watching this episode earlier? TV men started secretly appearing in the shots long before episode 39 when we met them. I think the Alliance had already teamed up with the Speakermen, so they were working together to catch the infected agent. I just don't believe he could stand there and watch, and all these guys just didn't notice him. By the way, we saw this infected cameraman in episode 31 when we analyzed last season. I hope you watched that video. The cameraman pulls the parasite off his buddy and cures him. And here we get a better look at that little bastard. It's not just a little toilet, it has some sort of mechanism to move its legs. In fact, these are some of Skibidi scientists' first inventions with mechanical legs. In new episodes, he'll make Skibidi striders, and then he'll make his own huge mechanical legs and become a real Skibidi Titan. But let's back to our parasite. It has a long thing sticking out of its mouth. That's the attachment he uses to control the agent's minds. Notice that the cameraman's fingers went back to normal when he was cured. 
I think the parasites are living skibidi, even though they have a lot of robotic parts. Why its connector is in something red is unclear to me. We've seen a lot of evidences that the agents are robots, but still, sometimes they are shown as half-living humans. Big Speaker Man didn't destroy the parasite. He took it for research. I think they may have even purposely infected the agents in the cage to test anti-parasite weapons on them. It's definitely easier than catching an infected agent, dragging him to the base and locking him in a cage. And by the way, that's the same scientist who tests the anti-parasite gun in the next episode. This is the same hangar, except they moved this hardware around a little bit. We see this overturned toilet at the entrance again. There are windows like this on top, and even the lights are the same here. There's this green screen with some kind of graph now standing against the wall here. I also think that these cameraman scientists were partners. It's possible that this guy with the black tie is the scientist who was sawed in two in episode 48 and then became mech cameraman. Remember in episode 32, Big Speaker Man took the infected cameraman in his hand. I think he brought him here in the cage to try to cure him somehow. And they did. The anti-parasite cannon worked. By the way, it's made up of different parts of the cameras connected to each other. We can see that this cannon completely destroys the parasites. I think it disables their hardware. And it's totally harmless for regular Skibidi toilets. But we also realize that the parasites probably can transmit a signal to the G-Man toilet. I think the G-Man gets a signal when a Skibidi is hurt or destroyed. Remember this guy in episode 21? Right after he was flushed, Jimmy came to the rescue. The agents likely held these infected brothers for a long time before they could be cured. But G-Man didn't show up until after the parasites were destroyed. By the way, this is the last time we see G-Man toilet without improvements. I think that in the next episodes we saw just copies of G-Man and the real G-Toilet is now being improved somewhere in Skibidi's base. But we'll talk about that in other videos. But for now, let's get back to analyzing. Skibidi scientist shoots a cannon directly into the speakerman's core and nothing happens. G-Man was a little scared that his new assistant would be cured and goes to the other side. But luckily for him, the parasite was not destroyed. I have a few possibilities as to why it didn't work. First of all, the cannon simply might not have had enough power for such a large parasite. I think if this tank wasn't destroyed, we'd know for sure if the Titan can be cured with the anti-parasite beam. But another possibility is that the beam just didn't reach the parasite. The core is the center of Titan's energy, but the parasite is at the back of his neck. So to cure Titan, the beam has to go straight into the parasite. Unfortunately, this scientist couldn't escape, but he gave the gun to the POV cameraman. I think the one we saw in episode 48 is the second scientist, but here he ran in a different direction, but he could have escaped too. It's also possible that the POV cameraman here is the third scientist, who knows? But that's unlikely. In the last episode, the POV was just a regular cameraman, and there were only two scientists. Here, there are two scientists too, and only one of them is saved. There's another interesting thing about this episode. While the POV cameraman is running away from the hangar, you can spot TV man. This guy is just standing there watching us. There's also a lot of smoke around. I can't figure out what it's from. Maybe it's a smoke from a collapsed building or maybe someone's teleporting in here. This speaker man here must have escaped too. We can see him running out of the hangar. Probably the big cameraman had time to open the cage. Maybe this is the same guy who showed up later in the next episode. But I still have one question. Why TV Man didn't help the agents to teleport and hide the anti-parasite gun? I don't know. Maybe he did it after the episode ended, but come on. For so many episodes, these guys just stood back and watched the fights. There's a chance that TV Men might not be as simple as we thought. But we'll talk about that in the next few videos. And that was me, Isa Toilet. See ya.